20 years ago, I flew 6,000 miles away from my home country, Malaysia, to, <laughs> to start uni in Oxford. Um, up until I got onto the plane, I have never left home for more than three days, and it was my second time on a plane. It was daunting, I was, I'm not gonna lie. I was to navigate a new country, um, new cultures, new friends, and new challenges. I remember my first day at uni so vividly. I have asked to be put with students with different cultures so I can meet as many people as possible. I anxiously waited for my housemates to arrive. The first to arrive was British Dave from Waterlooville. I honestly thought it was a place from the Grinch, but it is actually in Hampshire. I took a deep breath, much like I'm doing now, walked out of my tiny little room, and excitedly held up my hand and introduced myself. Now, I can't exactly remember the conversation between us, but before I knew it, being barely able to boil an egg, I have invited him for dinner. After much research, I decided to cook a chicken leg wrapped in bacon in order to impress. And everything was fine, you know, until he discovered that the middle of his chicken was raw. <laughs> well, you know, I do not recommend giving your housemate salmonella, but it did provide a good laugh. You'll be pleased to know I didn't kill him and discover that we actually share a love of popcorn chicken and snooker. Our conversation henceforth was like, do you remember the time that I tried to kill you? Next to arrive was Bosnian Davos, whose grandfather was the ex-prime minister of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We were hooked onto his very last word, and the red, fluorescent red saveloys that his mum sent him. As he told us about the story of how he escaped his country, being shoved in a car past flying bullets. I also remember him teaching me that you can squeeze cheese out from a tube. I later learned called Primula. <laughs> and how to consume a lethal green liquid called absinthe. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't lose an ear. You see, food is not mere nourishment. Food for me at uni was an opening gambit that leads one conversation to another. It is a powerful connector where sometimes there seems none. We share food, memories, lowered our inhibitions, and we open to people a little bit about who we are and who we want to be. Food enables me to navigate unfamiliar territory by making it universally familiar. And food helps me forge the relationships, and with new relationships leads to many possibilities and opportunities. Suddenly, life at uni doesn't seem so daunting. Food doesn't just connect me to people, it also connects me to my roots and eventually helped me embark on a new career. In 2014, I enter a little cooking show called MasterChef after being made redundant. I remember that day well. It was rainy and gray and cold, much like every winter's day. My phone pinged. My lovely friend has sent me an application form titled, Do It. I was feeling very low, um, so I thought, I've got nothing to lose. So I, I got onto the computer and I spent very little time answering the 16 questions that was there and hit send. Now in the time that, uh, of cooking that raw chicken, to me sending that application form, I had learned to cook. 
and discover I quite enjoyed the process, I was actually quite good at it. This is fueled partly of the scarcity of Malaysian food at that time. I had to learn to cook the dishes that I missed from home. So there I was thinking, okay, let's give this a go. Now to my surprise, I have not just gained the recipes and the knowledge of Malaysian food and cooking in general, but it actually connected me to a cuisine that I was brought up with, but never actually know much about. And when I got on into MasterChef, I knew I had to distinguish my cooking from other competitors. So I chose Malaysia cuisine to further enhance my identity. My mission was simple. Cook the food I know and I love, have fun, winning was optional. It really was. I just want to have fun. So to my surprise, I grew in confidence as my knowledge grew. Eventually, I won the MasterChef Championship and was crowned the 10th MasterChef Champion. And early this year, I went back, crazy that I am, to compete against my peers, against my peers, and was crowned the MasterChef Champion of Champions. Now, who would have thought a girl from Malaysia who could barely boil an egg all those years ago could win the most coveted competition in the UK, not once, but twice? I knew food is not merely few. Food has the power to connect. Food um, was, a, was my superpower. It has become my passport to a new whole career path and a connector to a whole new network of people. I have been to wonderful places. I have done many incredible things and met countless of interesting people. Well, you know, some were quite dull, but <laughs> you win some, you lose some. <laughs> now, I knew that I knew the power of food from a very young age and harnessed what it could do for me. It has become the currency. I use it as a currency to get what I want from life. My latest adventure would be a bar opening later this year in Malaysia, and it all began with a conversation with how much I love a cocktail. Well, you don't have to enter or win MasterChef to, top, to tap onto the power of food. Anyone, anywhere, any one of you in the audience can do it so easily in your everyday life. When I was made redundant, I was feeling quite low, as you might think. Um, but it wasn't handled properly. At that time, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to hire a lawyer. So I thought, what can I do? I need to think creatively, what can I do? I was a new mum and um, I was part of a chat group online. I put an advert on there to say, I'm looking for legal aid in exchange for cookery lessons in Malaysian food. <laughs> Within that day, I had found my lawyer. She has provided me with excellent pointers and I renegotiated better terms of my redundancy. She didn't get... <laughs> I thought, I'm not going to take this lying down. <laughs> so, uh, but she didn't get her cookery lessons in the end, but she did get two VIP tickets to a food festival a couple of years later. I also regularly bribe my friends, <laughs> clients, even strangers with food to get what I want. <laughs> Be it favors, childcare, Holiday stays. I fill my, my friend's mum's freezer with food in exchange to stay in her Devon cottage. <laughs> or it could be as simple as bringing someone a hot cup of coffee to make them smile. 
to know that you have the power to do that is a wonderful thing. Now, I have a few challenges for you if you're up for it, okay? Use food, be it cooking it, talking about it, eating it to connect with someone. Use that connection, if applicable, to your advantage. Here are some examples of what you can do. If you haven't already, learn to cook. <laughs> learn to cook. With rising costs, it is much cheaper to cook um, than to get ready meals or eat out. Not to mention the instant gratification of achievement. There are plenty of ways to learn. Start by learning from your family. What has been your favorite fruit growing up? Learn that first, perhaps. Learn the basics. Learn how to hold a knife properly. Learn how to um, make simple breads, um, chopping properly and safely, or even boil an egg. And for those of you who are more confident, host a dinner party with friends, with each one of you cooking a different dish and share the costs. That way, it's more fun and economical. Don't be discouraged with failures. Trust me, this comes from a girl who served her friend raw chicken and went on to winning MasterChef. <laughs> when you're next in a group of strangers, instead of talking about weather, us Brits love a sexy talk of weather. <laughs> we do, we do. Instead of that, you know, ask someone what their favorite foods are or what they dislike drinking or eating. You know, mine is asparagus. And you would ask me why. I would answer, it's because I hate going to the loo with asparagus wee. <laughs> One conversation will lead to another. And before you know it, you know about more about that person than you intend to. Now you know about my asparagus woes. <laughs> Bring someone food that you have, buy, or make to make someone day. Because it pays to be kind, and what goes around comes around. And we need more, those times more than we think. Barter or bribe with food to get what you want, okay? It might not work with your mortgage payments or your energy bills. You could try, you could try. But, you know, a bottle of wine for borrowing a lawnmower, perhaps. The promise of McDonald's if your child cleans his or her room. Or offering the officer a donut and try to get out of your speeding ticket, perhaps. <laughs> you know, the possibilities are endless. Get creative, guys, you know. But when it works, it's so satisfying, so, so satisfying. Um, food, is, um, I, food is essential to life, but life is fuller with love, with friendship, and kindness along the way. So I invite you to harness the power of food and see what it could do for you. Now, remember, food is not only fuel to our bodies, but it's also fuel to our souls and hearts too. Thank you so much for listening.